Hi, in this video, I'm going to share with you five points, five things that I personally try to use them in my home network here, or at least I pay attention to them and I make sure I'm actually aware of them because they can help me to prevent some future problems in my network. The kind of problems that, you know, it's going to take me like hours of troubleshooting just to realize, oh, I shouldn't have done that and I should have done this. So let's begin. So the networking equipment that I use must be capable of handling my networking needs and without being overwhelmed. Let me explain that with an example. Imagine this is my wireless router and this is my network requirements. Obviously and immediately I can see that this wireless router doesn't have some of the features that I need such as the VPN server and the quality of service which is not good. But since this is actually the limitation of its software, I might be able to fix it by installing a third party firmware such as the DDWRT. And it is actually something that we talked about a lot on this channel. But unfortunately there is no magic software that I can install to fix the limitation of hardware. For example, as you can see, this router is actually designed for a network up to 20 clients, which is definitely less than the 25 clients that I need to have in my network. And chances are, if I connect all of them, I'll be actually overloading this router, which might result in slow connections, packet loss, intermittent reboots, and crashes. And not to mention if I want to use the VPN server and the quality of service features, which definitely are going to add to the problem. Even if the router is not overloaded, my wireless clients cannot take advantage of Wi-Fi 5 because the router is obviously Wi-Fi 4 which is older and slower. The same actually goes for the wired clients because they cannot take advantage of their gigabit ethernet cards and there is obviously gonna be a bottleneck which is bad. So number one, I make sure the hardware that I use is capable and powerful enough for my network today and hopefully near future. I mean, it doesn't have to be the most powerful and most expensive hardware, but of course its power and capability should be relevant to what I need. The Ethernet cables that we use in our networks more or less look very similar to each other. Yes, I know they might have different colors or lengths, but other than that, they're just some cables with RJ45 connectors. For example, let's say if I want to connect my wireless router to my modem. Does that mean it shouldn't matter if I use this cable, uh, this cable, or even this one? Not necessarily, because one way that these cables could be different is actually the speeds that they can support. As you can see, there are different categories of cables with different speeds. So although these cables look very similar, they actually belong to different categories. One of them is CAT5 and the other two are CAT6. And that means if I use the CAT5 cable here, which can only support up to 100 megabits per second, I will create a bottleneck here with my own hands. That's why I always read the text written on each cable that I want to use to make sure it is at least CAT6. So number two, I always make sure I use at least CAT6 cables in my network because I actually lost count of the number of people I know including myself, who at some point after hours of troubleshooting, they realized that the speed problem was because of a CAT5 cable. Most of the wireless routers today in the market use two frequency bands, 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz. That actually means when I configure this router, I can have a 2.4 GHz wireless network and a 5 GHz wireless network. The 2.4 GHz band is older and usually more crowded than the 5 GHz band. It also has less available channels, therefore it is more likely to interfere with other wireless networks. And not to mention that there are some household appliances that operate on the same frequency band, which is gonna add to the problem. 
So usually, and I say usually because there might be exceptions, the quality of the 2.4 GHz band is not as good as the 5 GHz band when it comes to wireless networks. And I'll keep that in mind when I actually want to use the Wi-Fi. I mean, I try to use the 5 GHz network for the devices that need faster and overall more reliable connections. And I would use the 2.4 GHz network for the devices that don't necessarily need very fast connections. For example, maybe a wireless printer which is located in the far corner of the house. And I say far because although the 2.4 GHz band is not usually as fast and reliable as the 5 GHz band, it has a higher range. The lower the frequency, actually the higher the range. So number three, I make sure I'm aware of the pros and cons of each frequency band and I use them accordingly. But I also keep in mind that uh, because each environment could be different, it doesn't necessarily mean that always 5 GHz is better than 2.4 GHz. There might be exceptions. Okay, so we talked about the frequency bands, but now let's talk a little bit about the channels. For example, let's say I'm setting up a 2.4 GHz wireless network. As part of the configuration, I should select a channel that this wireless network is going to operate on. In North America, there are actually 11 channels to choose from for this frequency band, but only three of them are not overlapping. So in a perfect world where there are no other 2.4 GHz wireless networks nearby, I can choose any of these channels and I should be good to go. But unfortunately, most of the time that's not the case. That's why it is very important what channel I use, because the goal is to avoid any interference as much as possible. The good news is I can have my wireless router select that channel automatically. So the wireless router is going to scan the environment and choose a channel which is least crowded in this area. So far so good, right? But these conditions might change really fast. For example, one of my neighbors might change their channel. Or a whole new wireless network might appear. So does that mean my wireless router is going to scan the environment again and choose a new channel? Well, if it does that while I'm connected to it, I actually get disconnected until the new channel is being broadcast and my device reconnects to the network. So that's why they usually only change the channel when there are no wireless clients connected to them. So nobody gets disconnected in the process. And if that condition never actually happens, they just keep on using the same channel until maybe somebody reboots the router. And that could be why sometimes rebooting the wireless router can fix some of the wireless problems, even if it is only temporarily. When I know all about this, maybe every now and then I can do a little bit of side survey and change the channel manually myself if of course it is necessary. Or maybe if possible I can schedule my router to reboot itself every day. So the example I used here was about the 2.4 GHz wireless network. But the same concept goes for the 5 GHz wireless network as well. It just has more available channels, including more non-overlapping ones, which is good. Number 4, um, I make sure I know about the wireless channels. And if I want to have my wireless router choose a channel automatically, then I should know that um, it might keep on using the same channel for a long time until uh, certain conditions are met. So I might want to reboot it every now and then, or do a little bit of site survey and choose a channel manually myself. Last but not least is actually about the installation of my wireless router. I've already talked about on this channel that how important it is to install the wireless router in the right place. They have omnidirectional antennas, so it is best to put them somewhere in the center of the house, not on the ground, in a higher place, away from other electronics or anything that might block the signals. As you can see, this can help me to have a better wireless coverage by taking full advantage of my wireless signals. And also can help me to keep the signals within the house as much as possible. Because my neighbors don't need to see my Wi-Fi. Not only is it not very secure for me if others can also see my Wi-Fi, but it's kind of disrespectful of me too. Because my Wi-Fi can interfere with their Wi-Fi, which is bad for me 
and for my neighbors as well. So I try to be respectful to my neighbors by keeping my wireless signals within my house as much as I can. So number five, I try to install my wireless router correctly. I mean, I'm not just gonna randomly put it somewhere and expect the best performance. Usually the best place for a wireless router is somewhere in the center of the house. So do you actually use any of those five points? Uh, maybe one, two, or all of them? Let me know in the comments below and make sure you're subscribed so you won't miss the part two of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Thumbs up if you liked it and share it if you think others might like it too. Thank you again and I will see you next time. I don't know how to play it, but I can pretend.